Circuit Design developed modules for the following categories Serial, Audio, On Off Signals In this video we will talk about the CDT modules The CDT modules are designed for sending on off signals this signal from a switch or simple sensor can be input to a transmitter designed to accept such signals. A radio link can send information on the signal state to a receiver, where it can cause, for example, a warning lamp or motor to activate. To see a real life example, please visit the case study section on our website. The URL is at the end of this video. The CDT modules have the following features, such as the ability to send up to six signals independently while being able to select four RF channels. It is possible to pair transmitters to a single receiver. The photo MOSFET outputs can drive a variety of loads. There are two versions of this module, one for 434 MHz and the other 426 MHz. More details on the URL at the end of this video. The 426 MHz version only has 1 mW RF output compared to the 434 MHz 10 mW. Our calculation tools can be used to show the difference in the range between the two. The tools are available on our website. The link is at the end of the video. This type of radio module is suitable for those who want to simply incorporate the module into their product without worrying about the RF design or having to design a complex interface. Everything for sending only on-off signals is designed into the modules. Commercial sensors are available. In this example is a beam sensor for detecting obstructions. By using a mirror, we can place both units on one side for convenience. In addition, we can install a button. Both the beam sensor and the button can be plugged into a PLC unit using the appropriate connectors. We can install two lamps, two corresponding to the sensor and the button. They can be connected to the PLC output with the appropriate connectors. The PLC can be programmed depending on how we want it to treat the output when it receives an input. In this example we program a 2 second delay when the beam is broken so that we can ignore momentary triggers. Pushing the button turns on the green lamp. We can install the same connectors onto our wires leading to the transmitter. These connectors are identical to the ones used on the lamps previously. This allows us to plug these new wires where the previous lamps were connected. The transmitter needs to see a ground to start transmitting, so we put our trigger wires to the right pin on the PLC. If the CDT transmitter and the PLC use separate power supplies, we would also need to link their ground in addition to the trigger wires. On our receiver side, we can mount our own lamps. By setting our receiver to the right mode, the receiver listens for the signal and responds. We can test our radio link by obstructing the sensor and pushing the button. When the beam is stopped by the car, the transmitter will send the on signal to the receiver.
As soon as the car moves out and the beam is restored, the lamp goes off. Remember the two second delay we mentioned earlier, where we can see what happens if the beam is disrupted momentarily when the car doesn't stop. The PLC does not register this and does not instruct the transmitter to send any signal and the lamp stays off. With the battery powered operation our receiver can be portable. In the right conditions the signal range can be as long as 1 km in the open. Using the 400 MHz range is more reliable around buildings compared to 2.4 GHz. We hope you have enjoyed this video. You can visit our website for more information.